Hi, my name is Ben. Today I will make a video on my native country and then move on to others. Subscribe, leave a comment, like, and share. Don't forget to turn on the bell notification for new videos. Kenya is an East African nation known for its stunning landscapes and extensive animal reserves. For many years, its Indian Ocean coast supplied historically significant ports through which products from Arabian and Asian merchants entered the continent. Along that coast, which boasts some of Africa's best beaches, are mostly Muslim Swahili towns like Mombasa, a historic center that has contributed significantly to the country's musical and culinary history. Inland are populated highlands known for their tea plantations, which were an economic backbone during the British colonial period, as well as a variety of animal species like elephants, lions, giraffes, cheetahs, rhinos, and hippopotamuses. Kenya's western provinces are forested and defined by lakes and rivers, while a tiny area of the north is desert and semi-desert. The country's unique wildlife and scenic environment attract a considerable number of European and North American tourists, and tourism contributes significantly to Kenya's economy. Nairobi, Kenya's capital, is a large city, like many other African megacities, is a study in contrast, with contemporary skyscrapers overlooking enormous shanty towns in the distance, many of which are home to refugees escaping civil conflicts in neighboring countries. Older, more prosperous neighborhoods are ethnically mixed and well served by utilities and other amenities, whereas the tents and hastily assembled shacks that ring the city are organized tribally and even locally. And as much as whole rural villages have relocated to the more promising city in some cases, Kenya has a rich legacy of oral and written literature, including numerous tales that speak to the characteristics of determination and endurance, which are crucial and generally held traits given the country's experience throughout the struggle for independence. In his thoughts on one folkloric figure, Kikui writer Ngugi, one of the country's best-known writers globally, tackles these concerns. Kenya's many peoples are well known to outsiders largely because of the British colonial administrations in the openness to study. For years, anthropologists and other social scientists have documented the lifestyles of the Kisi, Maasai, Kamba, Luo, Kalenjin, and Kikuyu peoples, to mention a few. European and Asian immigrants from various countries add to the country's ethnic richness. Kenyans are proud of their own cultures and traditions, but they also recognize the value of national unity. Kenya's government has emphasized the necessity of Harambe, Swahili for pulling together, since independence. Kenya is divided horizontally by the equator and vertically by longitude, with South Sudan and Ethiopia to the north, Somalia and the Indian Ocean to the east, Tanzania to the south, and Uganda to the west. The majority of Kenya's enormous wildlife population resides outside of the country's various national parks and game reserves. Baboons and zebras, for example, may be found near human settlements in urban areas, such as roads. This has resulted in conflict between humans and animals, which has occasionally been handled by transferring animals to less densely populated places. In an attempt to address the issue, the Kenya Wildlife Service launched a Parks Beyond Parks initiative in the mid-1990s. The strategy intended to include local communities in the administration and distribution of cash generated by wild animals in the area, making people more accepting of their presence. The initiative has had some success, and with community participation, occurrences of poaching in national parks and wildlife reserves have decreased. Population From the early 1960s until the early 1980s, Kenya's population expansion slowed social and economic progress. Famines, wars, and sickness kept the population below 4 million in the first part of the 20th century. By 1963, the population was over 8 million and expanding quickly. After reaching 20 million in the mid-1980s, population growth slowed drastically. In the early 21st century, natural growth was still above the global average. Kenya's higher-than-average growth rate was likely to continue because two-thirds of Kenyans were under 30. The population growth constrained employment, raised education, health, and food import expenses, and prevented the construction of urban and rural houses. A dramatic drop in death rates, especially newborn mortality, and the customary predilection for large families drove the country's tremendous population expansion. Sports and Recreation The most popular sport in Kenya is football, notwithstanding the Harambe Stars' lack of international success. Additionally, basketball, 
volleyball, and netball are well-liked sports. Kenyans often get the option to play football and volleyball in social clubs. Netball is only played by women. Kenyan athletes are renowned internationally for their domination and distance running. Since the 1968 Olympic Games in Mexico City, when Kip Kano, Nafali Tamu, and Amos Bewitt all won gold medals, Kenyan distance runners have consistently won Olympic medals in the world's most prestigious events. For instance, Eliu Kipchoge, David Rudisha and Catherine Dariba have consistently won marathons all around the globe. One final lung-busting strike for Kipchoge. One giant leap for human endeavor. And you know... Daily life and social norms. Kenya, like many other emerging African nations, has a clear difference between its urban and rural cultures. Attracting individuals from all around Kenya, the cities of Kenya have a more cosmopolitan populace whose preferences reflect traditions that blend local and global influences. For example, Nairobi's nightlife caters to young people interested in music ranging from American R&B, hip-hop, and rock to Congolese, rumba. The city offers movie theaters and various nightclubs, where guests may dance or play pool. Water parks and family entertainment centers are common for youngsters. Despite Kenya's modernity and urbanization, traditional practices remain significant. Due to the thorough anthropological research of Kenya's peoples under British colonial authority, rituals and traditions are well recorded, oral literature is preserved, and various publishing companies publish traditional folk tales and ethnographies. Kenyan cuisine is primarily influenced by British, Arab, and Indian cultures. Common foods in Kenya include hugali, or maize mush, eaten with greens such as spinach and kale. Chapati, an Indian flatbread similar to pita, is eaten with stew and vegetables. Rice is also popular. In the majority of the nation, seafood and freshwater fish are consumed as an essential source of protein. Numerous vegetable stews incorporate coconut, spices, and chili peppers. Despite the fact that meat is not typically consumed daily, or in large amounts, grilled meat and buffets specialized in domesticated animals, or goat meat, are popular. Many individuals use shambas or vegetable gardens to supplement their diets. Kenya's urban life is by no means uniform. Mombasa, a mostly Muslim city, stands in contrast to Nairobi. Although, there are several restaurants, pubs, and clubs in Mombasa, there are also numerous mosques, and ladies wearing loose-fitting clothing, worn by married Muslim women are popular. Rural life is geared in two directions, toward the lives of rural residents, who continue to make up the bulk of Kenya's population and toward international visitors who visit the country's many national parks and reserves. <laughs> Even though agricultural responsibilities take the majority of rural residents' time, many nonetheless attend marketplaces and shopping centers, and some frequent beer halls. Mobile theaters can supply rural communities with entertainment. Kenya celebrates the majority of Christian festivals as well as Eid al-Fitr, which commemorates the conclusion of Ramadan. On December 12th, Jammu Huri, or Independence Day, is celebrated. Haduma Day, celebrated as a day of service and volunteering, and Mashuja Day, both in October, in honor of the country's heroes, whilst Madaraka Day, June 1st, commemorates Kenya's attainment of independence and Kenya's cultural heritage. National parks and game reserves are maybe Kenya's greatest cultural heritage. The finest place to witness the yearly wildebeest migration is the Maasai Mara National Reserve, which contains a Maasai community. A former Maasai settlement, Ambuseli National Park is located at the base of Mount Kilimanjaro. The number of big species such as lions, elephants, rhinoceroses, zebras, and giraffes in the northern Marsabi National Park and Reserve is well known. Savo East and Savo West National Parks are renowned for their distinct ecosystems and abundance of animals. Mazima Springs, located in Savo West, are crystal clear pools of fresh water that are great for watching hippos, crocodiles, and fish. Since 1968, scientists from the University of Nairobi, notably Richard Leakey, have uncovered hominid remains at Sibiloi National Park, located in the far north of the country. 1997 saw the designation of Mount Kenya National Park as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Beginning in 1997, the Lake Turkana National Parks, which consists of three national parks, 
in formerly Eastern Province, were designated as World Heritage Sites. The 2001 Declaration of Longo Old Town as a World Heritage Site attests to the beauty of its Swahili-influenced architecture. Several woodlands holding the ruins of villages or Kai originally inhabited by the Mijikenda people and now regarded as holy sites, were jointly named as World Heritage Sites in 2008. The Kenya National Archives and Documentation Service in Nairobi, situated in a building that was once the Bank of India, maintains a growing amount of government and historical records, as well as images and displays of arts and crafts. A National Library Service Board has been created to equip, manage, and grow Kenyan libraries, including branch library services. In addition to books, the Makamalan Memorial Library in Nairobi has newspapers and a legislative archives. Additionally, located in Nairobi, the National Museum exhibits archaeological artifacts and artifacts of indigenous ways of life. <laughs> Lastly, general elections in Kenya. The planned date for the general election was August 9, 2022. There were four presidential candidates, Odinga and Ruto being the frontrunners. Odinga stood as the candidate of the coalition Azmiya Wa Umoja, which featured his ODM party in Kenyatta's Jubilee Party and had been created to win the 2022 election. In February, Kenyatta, who was ineligible to serve a third term as president, backed Odinga, and in the same month he declared Ruto unsuitable to be president. Ruto, who had left the Jubilee Party, was the candidate for the United Democratic Coalition, a member of the Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance. David Waihiga, representing the Igano Party, and George Wajakoya, representing the Roots Party, were the other two candidates. Throughout the campaign, Ruto framed the election as a choice between hustlers in the dynasties, or political elite, such as Kenyatta and Odinga whose families had wealth and had long held political influence and power in Kenya. Kenyatta's father, Jomo Kenyatta, was the first prime minister and then the first president of independent Kenya, and Odinga's father, Oginga Odinga, was the first vice president. Thank you for watching till the end. Hit the bell notification to receive more updates as we make new videos. <laughs>